So my name is Abe Cohen. I'm also a technical account manager here at AdaCore. And today I'm going to be talking to you about fuzzing. I'm going to be addressing three main questions that people might have about fuzzing. The first more being the most general, what is it? Why is it useful? The second being, what, why did we choose the specific fuzzer that we chose called AFL? And then I want to wrap it up and talk about how it's going to work specifically with GNAT Pro and Ada and how it might look in some of your projects. Before we talk about fuzzing though, I find it helpful to zoom out a little bit and talk about testing in general. And one of the main goals of testing in general is to make your software more stable. And what does that mean? So by this definition, it's software that's highly unlikely to enter exceptional situations that it was not designed for nor tested against. So by this definition, logic follows that if you want more stability, test in more exceptional situations. And that's exactly what fuzzing does. Because fuzzing is what's known as a negative input test, which you might be able to tell what it does by the classification, but it feeds inputs that are designed to fail into your program repeatedly and looks for crashes. Turns out that while this makes your, while this does make your software more stable, it also has potential security benefits because more stable software is also, is also more secure software. So for example, let's say you have a system that relies on external data, maybe from a satellite, and you want to know what happens if, and you act on that data. What happens if that, you know, if that satellite starts giving you garbage data? Or what happens if someone tries to impersonate that satellite and, and deliberately tries to crash your program? You can see that, uh, that any, any bug that affects your, that any bug that affects your software and can make it crash is also something that somebody can exploit. So now that we know sort of the, the philosophy behind it, I want to go a little bit more in depth about what exactly a fuzzer does. So it's a black box test connected to an input, and the fuzzer fuzzes, or it'll, it, the specifics about how it does that, either via randomization or mutation, or, mal, or some, in some cases it'll malform the data. Uh, it, it depends on the specific library that we choose, and I'll go into that more when we talk about AFL. But it takes either your, in your seed, or, or it just starts from, or generates its own. It generates a new input, feeds that into your program, and then looks to see if, if, if your program crashes. If it does, it'll log the bug, and either way, it'll, it'll keep going and do this. Now, you might be thinking, but in Dewal's talk earlier, he mentioned, well, testing every input for a 128-bit integer could take forever. So, in o and he's right. So in order for a fuzzer to be efficient, it needs to be, in order to be, for a fuzzer to be effective, it needs to be efficient both in terms of how it chooses its inputs and how fast it is at running tests. And I'll get into how AFL does this later in the talk. If done correctly, though, fuzz testing has a lot of potential benefits. First and foremost, that it helps you find bugs in your code that other testing methods may not discover. So if you might notice, I have this bleeding heart symbol in the corner of my slide, and that represents heart bleed, which some of you may, or may have heard of. It was a pretty high profile bug found, uh, a pretty high profile uh, buffer, explo buffer overflow exploit found in OpenSSL in 2014. And analysis was done afterwards to determine how they could update their security practices in order so that they could have found Heartbleed and bugs like it earlier. And the results of that analysis showed that had they fuzzed their code with a specific sanitizer, which you can think of as an add-on if you want to focus in on a specific class of bugs, that it would have been much more likely that they would have found Heartbleed a lot earlier. And one thing that I haven't mentioned about, fuzz, about fuzzing yet is that you don't necessarily need access to the source code in order to fuzz something. So a lot of times, 
what a, what a hacker might do to a potential target program is they'll fuzz it and see what makes it crash and then do and then focus their investigation there. So fuzzing is also a good way to put yourself in the shoes of, of someone that's trying to attack your program. And I'll also get into this a little bit later if there's time. It's very, it's, but the cost in terms of setup difficulty and maintenance is very low, resulting in a very favorable uh, cost to benefit trade off. You also can't talk about benefits without talking about limitations. And the main limitation is that by nature of being a negative input test, it doesn't test your software's implementation against its specification. So in other words, it's only looking for program failure, not necessarily incorrect behavior. So it's not going to replace some of the other testing tools that you may already use, such as CodePeer or any of our other tools. The other limitation that I'm going to talk about is that by nature of being a black box test, it requires a bit of context or program knowledge in order to triage bugs. However, Ada mitigates this through its compiler uh, inserted check, so through its compiler inserted runtime run time checks. So, for example, if you have if you try to dereference a null pointer in or null access value in Ada, you'll get a constraint error at the place where you try to dereference it, and you'll know what's going on. But in C, that dereferencing a null pointer is undefined behavior. So a compiler is allowed to assume that any pointer dereference is non-null. This could result in a memory violation or a seg fault, which is what you might expect. But it could also result in your program running with that data that it got from a random address in memory and causing a crash somewhere else or, or having, the, system, having the, the cycle repeat and having more undefined behavior happen elsewhere in your program. Fuzzing, with all its unusual inputs, is designed to, is, is designed to root out issues like this. But if you're fuzzing ADA code, it, the, the, fu the reports that you'll actually get are going to be more useful than maybe in another language. So now that we know what fuzzing is, I know we know a bit about what fuzzing is, I want to talk about rabbits. Actually, though, um, if you remember from before, I mentioned that in order to be effective, fuzzers need to be efficient in running test cases, both in terms of input choice and speed. So in terms of input choice, what AFL does is it chooses inputs via a mutation-based algorithm, and it's driven by feedback that it inserts in the beginning. So let's say a specific mutation uncovers a new code path. It'll try similar mutations in order to cover related code paths, and that makes it more efficient. In terms of speed, it, fuzzing is very parallel friendly, so it has four point optimization where you can, where it'll, um, where it'll basically optimize the trade-off between starting a new task and just keep and just running it in in, it, in this in the tasks that it's already using, but it can also slice your program into the and only run the input processing phase during every test. So that means you reduce the overhead for every test, and when you're talking about millions and millions of tests a second, that can give you a very significant speed boost. Now, we chose AFL because it's effective. And as a result, it's used all over tech. And I know you probably can't read most of this, but I wanted to show you AFL's entire bug trophy case that they publish on their website. Uh, I want to show you just because, not only to show you that it's used all over, like in Mozilla Firefox and Safari and the iOS kernel and now OpenSSL, but also because many of these bugs were found by, peop by external people who just decided to fuzz the application because remember, you don't need access to the source in order to fuzz something. There are also some other nice to have features that, we, that AFL has. Uh, the first one is that it's chainable to other tools. So let's say you have a coverage requirement, but your test suite is maybe inadequate, or maybe you just don't even have a test suite that you would be able to use for it. You can generate your test suite using AFL, and then and then use that same test suite in GNAT coverage. 
Or you can take your GNAT coverage test suite, which you, you may have invested a lot of time in, and, and then use that to seed, to seed AFL and make it more efficient. Also, that I'm going to get into in a couple of slides, is it's, a, it's very plug and play friendly. So that could also you know, save your, your validation team a lot of time and headaches. So now that, we've, now that we've covered what fuzzing is and why AFL is good, um, I want to talk about how, the, I want to wrap it up and talk about how this is all going to work with GNAT Pro and ADA. So the original idea came from a customer written blog post on our site. So side note, if you have anything you want to write about, feel free to reach out. We would love to work with you on a post. Anyway, inspired by that post, we did some work to improve AFL's instrumentation plugin on GCC since it was initially written for LLVM and the GCC plugin needed some, needed some work. We also built out infrastructure to, we also built out infrastructure to leverage AFL's fork server and other in-process optimizations and added GNAT fuzz to our nightly build. So it's now available for beta testing. If you want access, just find an ADA core employee and ask about it or you can always open a ticket and we would love to help you. We're also working on new features funded by government projects and industry, government research projects and industry partners. This is just a quick, I, I know I mentioned how, how easy it is to get set up with, with fuzzing, I just wanted to go through it really quickly. There are two main things that might be helpful to know uh, about like when specifically fuzzing with AFL and ADA. First is that AFL looks for crashes via a signal from the OS. So, but if ADA, if in if in ADA you have an exception, but no, and it propagates to the top level handler, it'll just terminate without sending that signal. So, what AFL is, is essentially does is, let's say you have your process that you know processes an input file. What AFL essentially will do is it'll just say, when there's an exception, do a core dump, and that'll, and that'll send the signal that AFL is looking for. Then, once that's set up, you just run these, these quick to, you build your project, and you run AFL fuzz, and you're up and running. So it's really, it's, it's, very, it's very easy. Just to wrap things up, fuzz testing your software has stability benefits, but also security benefits. It's simple to set up, but also effective at finding, at finding different types of bugs and has utility to other testing tools that you may, or may already use or be looking to integrate. Many companies around a lot of, uh, around many fields in tech are, and open source projects, are beginning to integrate fuzzing into their testing processes and keep an eye out on our announcements for GNAT Fuzz. And thank you for listening. <laughs>